you ever used artistry in Photoshop? Artistry brushes are brilliant, but you can also combine them to create effects with neural filters as well, PC or Mac. First thing you can do is create a brush for your artistry. And the basic brushes might not be exactly right. So file and new, just create a very small document, 400 by 400, and create. Just go down here and select the polygon tool. Polygon tool is great for creating polygons, but it's also useful for creating star designs. I'm going with pixel and it's color set to black. Just go up here and you've got settings. Just settings, you can change a polygon to a star very quickly by clicking here and setting the star ratio to something less than 100. I'm going for 20, so it's a very sharp star. And just drag from top to bottom, left to right, and you can see your star design there using black. And that makes a really good artistry brush, much nicer than your basic round brush, as far as I'm concerned. Go to edit and define that brush preset. If you want to save any brush, new brush, just use that. Edit and define brush preset. And give it a name, maybe star one. And click OK. Now you've got that, what you can do, you can go and create a document. And I'm just going to create a very basic document with gradients. But you can use images, pattern designs, anything. File and new. This time it's going to be larger. So 2700, just randomly selecting a size, but fairly large file. Click create. Now you've got here, art history brush, and that's 362. Weirdly, I'm not going to use it at that size. I'm going to reduce it down dramatically. You would think it wouldn't make any difference, but it does. If you use just a circular brush with this and a very small size, you'd think they look very much the same, but the result is very different. So I'm just going to go down to about nine or 10 or eight, really low number of pixels. But you need something if you're going to use art history and I'm going to create a gradient. So select the gradient tool and it could be anything else. It doesn't have to be gradients. Gradients are just useful. And you can of course select any gradient from the presets here. I'm going with the rainbow one, which you can find in the legacy gradients. Using linear or radial, doesn't matter again, but use the blend mode of difference. Because the thing is, you can then apply, and you can apply it multiple times at different lengths, at different origin positions, just by dragging and releasing, dragging and releasing. And you can create within seconds, a fairly abstract, colourful design using the difference blend mode and linear and this rainbow gradient. I don't want to use this per se. I'm going to use it obviously with the history, but the point of this is that it's a source for the art history brush. So I'm just going to go over here to the history panel and you can find that in the window menu and just click there. So you can see now I've selected that that's what we've got here. You've got all these other ones to choose from as well. You can always, at any point, just click here and it will use that as the source for the art history. Where's the art history? Well, depending if you've modified, of course, your Photoshop, you might, might be in a different position, but normally it's beneath the history brush. And the great thing about art history brush, select that, is one you can then use, and I'm just gonna use the star brush, and you can reduce the size down, say so again, about eight or nine. Here, you can go for a loose medium, loose long. There's a load of different styles. And just explore, experiment with it. But I would say loose medium is pretty good. And you can use that. Now, I could use this image, but I'm not. I'm also just going to go to edit and fill. I'm going to fill it with black. So the content, I'm just setting to black. You could set it to something else, perfectly reasonable as well. Click OK. Now apply it. As you apply it, you can see what happens it creates this really lovely contour design very quickly. And you apply it nice and loose like that. You can apply effects as well. But you've got this document. What you can do, you can go to image and you can go to duplicate. So you can turn around and just duplicate that one. Now you could give it a name. You could say this is contour one or something else. Perfect reasonable. I'm just gonna keep these all these files. Click okay. And then I'm gonna continue. Just going to modify this one. 
and you can apply it obviously multiple times. Now, you'll notice what happens here because this document has got a completely different, I'm using the source image, so you can modify it there. You don't have to, of course. You can also go to filter and down to maybe blur, apply some blurs to it. Just create a very subtle effect like that. You can then go back to this one, and this is the one with the art history. This is the key document. And you can, of course, duplicate this. So again, you can apply some additional brush strokes, and it again follows that gradient. But of course, you've got all these gradients here as well. So you can just click it there, and now, it, I don't know what it looks like, but I'm just going to apply it. You can see that was the gradient design then. And you can see now I'm over overlaying that. You can, of course, combine it again with filters. So you go to filter and Gaussian blur if you want to, or maybe stylize an oil paint. Creates a nice smeary effect there. Stylization eight and cleanliness eight as well. So you've got this design. And this design can also be, again, image and duplicate. Always remember that when you've duplicated it, you're working on the new document. So if you go here with the artistry again, you can do that. It will use this, the snapshot of the original file, which is fine. It can create some interesting variations of that. And of course you can of course, go and edit and transform and so on and so on. But if you want to use the artistry, just go back to the original one. Again, you've got this and you can click here and create some more, some more variations. And you could, of course, continue. That's not the point of this. I'm using these. I've got these files now. So I've got this one, this one, this one, and this one. I could create hundreds of these designs. And of course, I could do it on layers to build up some lovely depth imagery as well. But I can also go back to an original image. So I've got this photo of my favorite town. And then what I can do, I can go to neural filters. So filter and neural filters. Just go down there, filters, neural filters, and there's loads of them. And they keep adding more and more. You can see a whole long list. There's also a wait list. Portrait generator, sounds great. Water, long exposure, I have no idea. Shadow regenerator. There's a load of different ones that obviously are upcoming at some of them. Wait list. I can't wait to see them, of course. Style transfer. Just go there. If you haven't got these, and you can see here, you've got a little list. You might have that. Just click there and it Click here, download. You think it'd be click there, wouldn't you? But download, and it takes can take a minute or two. I've actually waited about half an hour for mine to download occasionally. I don't know why. But I'm just going to go down here, style transfer, use style transfer, and it's got loads of these great styles. But what you can also do is make sure you turn it on. You can see it's highlighted there. Just go to custom, and now you can select an image, obviously any image you want. But you've got these ones, Untitled One. Now, I'm not certain which one, but it always gives you a preview, which is very nice, very useful. And you think, oh, you know what? That's not going to do much. That's not going to be very good at all. But actually, that is interesting as well. And it will take a few seconds to process, processing on device. And then you get a lovely, very unusual, from just that star design. It's something I must explore. There must be obviously other designs, very basic black and white design to create some very interesting, odd distortions and images like this. But also I've got other ones. So I'm just going to go down here and you've got Untitled 2. And that's one of the gradients. And this time it will obviously produce a far more colourful design. And you can see the mix of colours, the lines. It will use that to create that star design. Takes a few seconds. Now I've got the strength set to 20. I think to be honest, that is probably a decent setting. If you set it too high, I don't think the results are that much better. In fact, it, it doesn't really rely. Sometimes you can tweak these and they're great and useful if you've got certain things like background blur. Very good if you've got a strong central image that you want to blur the rest of it. But in this case, I don't want to do that. But look at the design you've created there. And that's just created using that one. Got another one, Untitled 2. Now I don't know what, this one will be darker because you've got a lot of black there. So a lot of black, it will use that and look and say, well, this is a going to be a much darker design. Let's just wait a few seconds to get this. And again, it will modify the image. Now there does seem to be a fair consistency in the styles that it uses. You can see the ripples that it uses. 
I'm not saying I would love to see them change or add additional algorithms to modify that. I would love it if you could actually modify the shape that it seems to be using as an internal feature. Don't know why they haven't done that. However, let's just go to the next one. This one, I think is a nice one as well. And you can always use part of the image. So once I've just applied, I'm just gonna apply this one now. You can see it's uh, this one before, because it was very dark, creates a very dark scene. And you've got other options, obviously, you can change the brightness, saturation. Very rarely change those, but you can use them. And you can see the result there. Creates a very intense, swirly, sort of Vincent van Gogh-like design. But you've got these to modify as well. So I'm going to try it. brightness. Let's just change that. So brightness, just boost it up a bit. And saturation, boost it up a bit. But you can also go to the image as well. So you can just select part of it. So just that part. You can see that now cropped. It says clear crop. You can just do that. And then it will process using that. So you've got some greens, you've got some reds, and you've got some yellows. And it will use that in the final image once it produces it. And again, processing does take a few seconds. It is not instant. But there, when it goes upwards like that, it seems to generate a sort of a crossways approach. Now, it's a pity you can't rotate this. You can resize it. But there's no rotation. It would be nice if you could do it at 45 degrees. Then, of course, you would assume that the angle it would use would be at 45 degrees, as well as different selections. If you could actually combine multiple selections within this, it would be brilliant for this reference image. And then you can click OK. You can also save it to a current layer, new layer, new layer mast, smart filter, and new documents. If you want to, you can create it to a multiple different. And if you go for new document, so new document, click OK. It will save it, and you're in a new document, but you've still got the original. And you can then use that, this thing, in this, with the star filter. Or go to filter, or star transfer, I should say. Filter and neural filters. You can use all those sources as before, but this time in, say, in landscape mixer. So you can explore. There's lots of great features. It's a beta, this one, so it might change. So you can select that, so it's turned on. You've got these options. If you click here, you can turn it into a lovely snowy scene, which I think is great. I'm not so certain it's convincing as snow, but it does sort of look snowy. But you've got custom, exactly the same as before. And exactly the same, you've got untitled one. So let's just select it with the star. These creative tools, I think, are great. This one seems to create a more a pencil sketch, smudgy look. To the design. And again, you've got this, because of course all this white, you can see you've got this white here, you've got a lot of white introduced into it. But exactly the same as before, go to another one of these ones, one of these sort of line designs, which just create using artistry, and you can see the result. Now, I don't know where this comes from. I have to say, I don't know, but it creates lots of linear sort of lines, and that's the thing that's great, but it always looks like foliage. <laughs> I don't know, but that's what it looks like to me. I don't know where it gets it from how it works it out, why it uses that, curls certain things, other things it doesn't. Text seems to be destroyed completely. And again, you can go and use some other one. So let's just go for this one, another one. This one's darker. I suspect the result may be slightly darker. Ooh, it is, I don't know what it's created, this weird abstract cloud smoke coming out. <laughs> Very odd. And that's the thing about this. That I love about these these filters. They are great for exploring a whole range. And also, of course, you've still got day option as well, as well as night. Night always seems to make everything just dark. But you can see you can combine it to create, I don't know what that even is. Looks like the entire street has been dug up. Very odd abstract designs can be created from this. And you can vary it just by the sources. And of course, you've still got that original image. So here's the, yes, that was the, Let's just see what happens there. Ah, oh, creates it sort of more, uh, you can see it's linear, it's got a line going across ways sort of approach, very odd. And once you're happy with everything, just click OK and save it maybe to a new document and use that as a source and so on. I'm just gonna cancel this point. You can see there's a whole range of different features, all using art history ones such as this, and you can modify them. 
You don't have to keep it like that. There's lots of other filters. So filter, liquify. Liquify is great. So you can always go to liquify and you can just distort it. And I know you think, oh, you know what? That's not gonna have any effect. That does actually modify it quite dramatically just by distorting it like this. Just dragging things out to create a new source file. You distort it in all kinds of ways. Click OK and then use that design. And you could use it, of course, with the filter itself. So gain filter, neural filters, and use that. And combine them in multiple different ways. Lots and lots of creative opportunities, abilities in this. Hope you found this of interest. Please let me know in the comments below how you'll be using this feature. Have you used this feature? Will you be using this feature? Also, thank you much. Bye.